Hello, this is Virtual Chess Noob, learning and having fun with chess. And today we've got a Vienna game, Max Lang Defense. And I've received a few questions about how to play against a Max Lang Defense with Vienna. So let's have a look. e4, e5, knight c3, knight c6. Max Lang Defense, bishop out to c4. And now my opponent plays the most solid response with the second knight. Now here, as a Vienna game player, you need to make a choice because the best move is probably developing the other knight and effectively you enter a four knights Italian. However, I don't play uh, the Vienna to play an Italian. Now this is perfectly fine, so you need to make the choice. However, the logic here is if we want to play Vienna game like games, we want to get the pawn onto f4. Now to do that, we need to have another defender of the f4 square which is going to be the bishop, which means that we need to push d3. So there's a certain logic here, d3, f4, and then we can put our knight behind the pawn. So d3. Now here the opponent develops their bishop, perfectly sound, and immediately I decide to play aggressively, provocatively, because if they opt to trade pieces, if they decide to trade the bishop, well, we get to open our f file. So this is not necessarily the most accurate, but the strategic element of the Vienna game is to try to get a very rapid attack on the opponent's king side. And it looks like the opponent wants to castle short. So we want to get an attack on that side. If they want to move their bishop and choose not to trade, well, we force that bishop to move twice and you know, potentially gain a bit of tempo. We want that tempo because that allows us potentially to get that early attack on the king side. My opponent here decides to drop their bishop back, which is fine. And now another provocative move because again, I'm now attacking the bishop. I want to potentially trade knights because if the knight gets traded off, well, they have one less defender on their king side. However, my opponent opted to short castles. You can see that was technically a mistake. It's about plus two. They should in fact have traded. However, here I don't necessarily immediately punish black um, because you know, my idea was still to try to attack down the king side. I decided to just get rid of that bishop. There we go. Develop my other knight now. Trades, trades. And here my bishop is now facing against f7. And this is a very thematic move in the Vienna game, uh, basically pinning the opponent's uh, f-pawn. Uh, potentially there may be a future sort of double attack. If the knight moves, queen potentially can go out. Again, attacking down the king side. So here they you know, make a chain of pawns. That potentially makes a lot of sense. I decide to move my queen up to, again, provide a potential extra attack. Not entirely sure the best way to go here, but you know, it certainly it prevents their knight from moving that way as well. They bring the knight back. I now drop my bishop back. I don't want to lose that bishop. Still facing against that f7 pawn. They rotate their knight across. I now castle long. Now, these pawns, the idea would be to throw them down, you know, the king's side as a bit of a pawn storm to break open black's defenses. Here, they push a pawn. That was an inaccuracy, doesn't achieve very much. Now here, it's actually zero, zero, zero. So we're pretty balanced. And in most of this game, black is actually slightly ahead evaluation-wise. I would argue, however, I've got the more forthright attack, so better attacking chances, and in fact, this makes all the difference. So throw the pawns down, advance. They try to you know, pin, that's fine. If they take, I can catch it back. And more than that, I now have queen. It's a fork of the queen and the bishop. I expected that they will probably trade queens and then I get to open that h file, which is very good for me with the rook and with myself already castled the other side. Now here, Black should not force that trade of queens because if I capture the queen, you know, they just capture back with rook, developing one of the rooks potentially, that's, that's very good. They should actually just capture that knight. However, they couldn't resist, captures, captures, and now things are looking quite good for me. That open h-file commanded by my rook, very powerful. 
So they decide to, you know, uh, you know, maybe add an extra defender. Maybe that's what they were thinking of uh, with uh, with the move of their king. That's not necessarily a, a wise move, given that you know that pawn is basically pinned to uh, to the king. Now, I now push my rook to h2 because I'm going to going for a battery. Captures, that's fine, captures back, they push their knight, that doesn't make a lot of sense. And now we've got the battery staring at the h7 pawn like a cannon. Um, he, black, unfortunately freaks out thinking that maybe they needed to create some sort of escape square uh, for uh, for their king. So potentially, you know, thinking captures, he, push, you know, it looks like mate, but they forgot that bishop. That bishop commanding that light square diagonal, looking at f7, it's a very powerful bishop because it actually covers that square as well. So that was a blunder because like a cannon, it's now mate in one. <laughs> Good game, GG. My big takeaway from this game is that the way to play the Vienna game, including the Max Lang defense, is to strategically attack the opponent's king and kingside, especially if they castle short. Stockfish will often disapprove, but despite the evaluation, it is often winning at the beginner intermediate level. I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.